Hey, brothers and sisters from the StarkNet ecosystem. Welcome to the Star Cafe, a virtual space cafe where you'll enjoy some good quality content about StarkNet. Brought to you by Nurstar, your personal Stark barista. So, my dear friends, uh, let's start uh, the first Star, Star Cafe of the week by making uh, an episode about uh, StarkNet Social, which is a social media platform which is being built on chain and uh, on StarkNet to be precise. And uh, today we'll enjoy a good coffee together with the team uh, behind this project, Dolven Labs, which is also a collective of builders that has been contributing uh, to the StarkNet ecosystem since an early stage and uh, on different fronts. So uh, let's give a warm welcome to Ahmed and uh, Rashmil from Dol Dolven Labs slash StarkNet Social. Hey guys, welcome, how is it going? Hi, Nurstar. First of all, thank you for having us. And we really like this concept and, you know, just letting people know about giving them a deep insight into what's going on in StartNet. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for, for coming. Uh, it's great to have you here. And yeah, I'm doing great, even, even greater by having uh, some talented uh, guys like you today. So also, um, hello to, uh, to Ahmed. Hello, hello, Nurstar. Uh, it's going well here as well. Uh, thank you. Thanks for asking. Um, my pleasure. Uh, so guys, let's break the ice with a simple question. I mean, about uh, your story and the story of Dolven Labs on StarkNet. So which is also the, your background and also the background of Dolven Labs as a you know, collective of builders. And uh, which are the contributions that Dolven Labs have brought to the StackNet ecosystem during the last year, since you've been uh, uh, committing and contributing to the ecosystem since an early, early stage, as I remember? Definitely. I think we have been in StackNet at a fairly early stage. And even right now, we believe that StackNet is at a very nascent phase. A lot of people are going to join StartNet and it is going to grow into something really big and great. And that's what we believe. Uh, I'm Rasmo, I'm from India, and I have an extensive background in DevOps and CyberSec. And basically that's how I connected with Amit uh, about three years ago and we were working for two years. And there were many projects where, you know, we would uh, just... Uh, coincidentally collaborate together to build them and deploy them and to help manage them uh, in certain ways. And we connected and uh, we were basically just clicked together. And through the time we became good friends and we had like certain uh, common ideals. And we were basically observing the last bull run where there was the breakout of the metaverse and the NFT market. And uh, we were observing that uh, we were observing that pretty closely, and at that moment we were deciding upon uh, what we should like start or get into together. And then you know, uh, Amit kind of was very fascinated by Startnet, and he introduced me to Startnet and what they were offering. I believe he he had a good call with them and with one of their uh, dev advocates and he was pretty impressed by the tech they were offering and I found it pretty interesting too. So we took our overall experience and the experience that we did like analytically towards the bull run because uh, what we were noticing is the, you know, the growth of the launch pads and the NFT and the metaverse hype. But on the other end, the thing that came after was just the, you know, the breaking of the dream as it could not sustain itself. That growth could not sustain itself. And that was uh, for the fair reason, because uh, it was more fueled on ambition and promise than, you know, like doing rigorous research into what you're investing into, what is the deeper roadmap and what is the commitment of the people. Uh, so that's why we founded Dolven Labs on StartNet earlier last year in March. And Dolven Labs is a DAO-based ecosystem catalyst to understand it or break it, break it down into more 
easy language. I would say Dolmen Labs is an accelerator for StartNet, which also builds innovative and creative projects and initiatives. So yeah, and uh, to answer the second part of this question is what have been our contributions till now? So as Dolmen Labs, our aim is always to like, as I said, through our experience and, and doing the analysis of the last world run, as Dolmen Lab, we would like to provide a sustainable growth to the StartNet ecosystem and add and create value for the users and the community. To do that, first of all, in when you come to StartNet, you can understand that everything on startnet a layer two and is built around the cairo land which is a novelty in on the blockchain space at the moment and uh, we built initiatives around that like cairo kings arena which was an online on-chain coding competition for cairo land we had good partnerships in the ecosystem that sponsored and supported us for that initiative and I believe the participation was also very quite uh, fulfilling. And after that, we had uh, our Dolphin Lab testnet, of course, which was running. And, and basically, in that, we had a concept. We call it the StartNet Quick Launch Kit. As I said, when you're building in Cairo Land, it is a very unique language at the moment. And I really appreciate the people who are building the resources for people to learn and evolve and understand that. I think the latest one is the Cairo book that they have come up with. It's on GitHub, I guess. And I, I had a chance to have a brief look at that, and it looks pretty interesting. Of course, in future, I, I expect them to, uh, and expect not even them and other people to contribute and bring more resources into that. And I think the StartNet is doing a great job to incentivize the developers. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we had an initiative which is called the StartNet Quick Launch Kit. And a, one of its uh, tooling is available on our testnet, which is version one, which was launched last year. So in that Quick Launch Kit, the basic idea is to allow you to launch on StartNet without having the, you know, the hassle to go through all the development challenges of, you know, uh, adopting Cairo. So this is how the quick launch kit works. You have a permissionless token minter, permissionless token vesting, and permissionless liquidity locker. So you can create your token without knowing or the challenges or you know getting into the uh, tech stuff about Cairo. And you can just use the interface and deploy your token. You can create your vesting for that through just an interface and also lock your liquidity to secure your investors and community about your project. So yeah, these are few of the initiatives that we did as Dolvin Labs, but you know, uh, getting into this year, uh, like we at the, you know, we were expecting like till now that there would be like a significant update in the mainnet, but we, what we have learned is, you know, that the Cairo one has arrived and through our discussions to different people and, you know, start on itself it is expected that there is going to be a six month transition period so basically all the people you know who have developed their contracts and earlier versions of Cairo will be all you know standardizing over a period of six months and I believe the protocol would exclusively operate on Cairo one and stop the even the support for the older versions of Cairo so for Dolvin Labs, we thought, you know, this is uh, because the Dolvin Labs ambitions are more towards, you know, the uh, the first part of it being, you know, accelerating the ecosystem. And we have like a investor, you know, uh, module where we provide early stage investment to projects through our governance, which is the DAO. So it it, it is just not viable at the moment to invest our time into that since there's not going to be, you know, uh, immediate launch, even though we have contracts prepared for our governance and other uh, important modules, we have held them back. And then we came to, you know, like uh, building something like StartNet Social, which is really interactive, really easy for people to understand. And it provides, we really think it provides great value to StartNet. So, yeah.
Uh, I see. Thanks a lot, Rashmi, for highlighting uh, the story, the mission of Dolven Labs, together also with uh, its past, current, and future experimentations uh, that are taking place uh, on Starknet. Uh, Ahmed, would you like to add something, uh, especially on your background, so that we can uh, continue with uh, Starknet Social uh, later on? Sure. Uh, I totally agree to Rashmi, first of all. And um, let me mention about my background a bit. So uh, I have been building in Web3 industry uh, for more than three years. And I met with Starknet ecosystem and Cairo uh, more than one year ago. And as Rashmil said, uh, we were developing and sub we were develop developing projects with Rashmil and helping to other teams uh, in their projects. So we decided to build on Starknet. So uh, quickly, this is my background. Uh, that's quite a very good uh, background. And yeah, I remember you being one of the first also developers uh, yeah. getting busy on, on Starknet. So yeah, yeah. Uh, shout I out have, to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had involved to Starknet ecosystem and builders at really early stage. So, yeah, 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 I recollect that. Yeah, congratulations for for your journey so far. It's been a, an amazing one, I suppose. And uh, well, uh, right now let's start diving uh, a bit deeper on Starknet Social. And uh, do you remember how this idea behind Starknet Social was born? I mean, how was it born in your minds? And uh, which were the first steps that that you took in order to turn this vision into a reality? And definitely. So it is very interesting how we came up about Starknet Social. As you mentioned in the previous question about the initiatives of, you know, Dolvin Labs towards Starknet, one of them was Cairo Lib. You know, Cairo Lib.dev is a Cairo Lang library. It's a library that we created last year after our Cairo Kings Arena, which will uh, basically was created in order to, like, uh, create an index of just smart contracts and Cairo Lang. It's basically like a cheat sheet. If you're a developer, you can just go there and just type the contract that you want and you can find all the published and verified contracts by people uh, building on Startnet. So last winter, I believe, you know, uh, we were looking into options of like self-publishing because we had like a submission module set up at that moment on Cairo Lang, uh, on Cairo Lib. Uh, and then we were like, how we can make it like auto submit, like people can submit the contracts themselves and, you know, uh, provide all the descriptions and all the necessary data accordingly. And at that moment, I believe I was working and he created something which was a very detailed module. And we were even like into like providing uh, usernames to users in that uh, Cairo Lib. And for those usernames, what we decided was, you know, they can register a .cairo domain. So when we were thinking about it, you know, we found it really interesting and the just the aspect of uh, having it uh, exclusively for Cairo Lib, we thought it was a bit less. So we thought and we were, you know, pretty much convinced that, you know, at Startnet at this moment, there is uh, something like we felt a necessity for a social network protocol, a dedicated social network protocol, which is uh, not just, uh, you know, like uh, providing domain service. So that's how we came about to like create Startnet Social. When we came up with that idea, we had, uh, as, uh, as we always do and try to provide people, is something unique value for what they're getting into. So I believe uh, briefly, if we, I can talk about is at Startnet Social, we have social spaces, which is your personal Web3 landing page on Startnet. And we have a NFT avatar, a completely customizable avatar that you can create, that you, which you get for free when you're minting on Startnet Social. One of the other notable features, I mean, the social space is super highly customizable. You have many options to like register your identity. And I think we'll deep dive into that. But one of the other important things is what we will be bringing is a trust core system. 
So yeah, maybe we can talk about it uh, in the next question. Uh, sorry, absolutely. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, for this for highlighting uh, you know these uh, the the early story of uh, Stagnant Social, how it was born, and uh, well, uh, I saw that you launched uh, the mainnet last week. So maybe Hamet, uh, uh, could you tell me uh, what you can currently do on Starkness Social and uh, what, what you'll be able to do on this social platform uh, in the near future? Okay, uh, so I can uh, I must say the Starkness Social is the mix of the uh, Link Tree and uh, Lens protocol. So the biggest uh, use case of Starkness Social is right now. Uh, the people or pro people on Starknet uh, or uh, influencers on Starknet like you or the projects on Starknet can uh, create their own personal landing page. Uh, <clears throat> like, for example, for Dolvin Labs, uh, we could list uh, the, the links of all the links of uh, Dolvin Labs in just in one place. And... Uh, we can customize uh, our page and also we can uh, track the numbers of this page uh, through the Google Analytics. Uh, so currently, this is the biggest uh, use case for Stacknet Social. But what we are currently working on is the trust score. I think uh, Rashmi can explain this uh, thing better than me. Uh, so, yeah. Sure. Yeah, Rashmi, feel free to continue. So, yeah, basically, you know, when we look at you know the social space right now if i can give you an idea you know when you have a social space especially on starting social first of all what we are trying to eliminate is people uh, pretending to be projects and trying to scam the community what we have uh, communicated to especially the dolman labs community that through starting social on Starknet, you know, if somebody reaches out to you as Dolvin Lab or even Rushmill and asks you to send a certain amount of funds to a wallet address, you can just visit my profile on Starknet Social. You can visit Dolvin Lab's profile on Starknet Social and just verify the wallet address. Because on the social space page that you have, you can verify your wallet addresses, you can list your links and all the relevant details and data that you have. As Amit said, we took inspiration, of course, from Linktree, but we have developed it completely into a customizable, you know, like a landing page for your personal use or your business use. You can integrate even Google, you know, you can just put your G tag in, you have your personalized your space option. You go there and you put like your Google tracking ID there and you can track the visitor data independently of us, you know. So we are not getting that data and you are only able to access that. So these are the few features. More into, uh, you know, the roadmap, just about the social space, we would be, you know, developing it further, like adding like a quick pay section. You can use that quick pay as a donate button to yourself or, you know, for your project, for any purpose, for a cause or anything that you would like. Uh, introducing featured content, introducing the trust core, and the trust core is one of the many interesting concepts. What the trust core does is a trust core is an open algorithm, which we are developing and building. Through this open algorithm, we will be able to determine bad actors on a network and differentiate between the people who are contributing to the growth of a network to the, you know, bad actors and bots on a network. Now, let's put it in a simple language. Let's say there is a giveaway and there are, you know, like civil attacks and different types of attacks where people use a huge bot network and they register through that giveaway and basically they are taking the allocation of innocent and hardworking people who are trying to grow that blockchain and of course you know when you have a certain high number invested into a giveaway your chances of receiving something is definitely high and this have been proven from time to time in these uh, 
airdrops and giveaways and incentive programs. It's not something that happens rarely. It is something that happens very frequently. With a trust score system, which would be a, an open algorithm, it's not something that would be closed and not accessible to people to understand and what it is doing. What it will do, it will look at your activity on the network, your transactions, your interactions on testnet, your, you know, you having, you know, uh, these days you have OATs on chain achievement tokens, a proof of attendance protocol, NFTs, all of these it would take and it will evaluate and give you a numerical value or let's say a trust score. So let's say a healthy user for our network has a trust score of 115, but if there's a bot, it would have a trust score of something like, you know, 10, 12, or even a minus, a negative trust score. So if you are, you know, if you are, uh, let's say a project or, you know, even a blockchain, you can use our trust score algorithm and just whitelist the people, you know, you can set a baseline that, okay, I want my giveaway f for people at least having a trust score of 70. And you can just whitelist people above that threshold. And this way, you are sure to incentivize the people who have contributed to your network, to your project, to your purpose. Moreover, you know, this can have various uses, as I said, you know, it is to definitely promote a fair behavior on network even you know as i said in nft marketplaces it, it often happens that uh, people are you know purchasing their own nft multiple times through different accounts to pump the price of that nft but an integration of something like trust core can give you the you know the data into the past of the wallets that have purchased that and you can understand that the you know the secondary purchases made are significantly of you know lower trust scores and are probably uh you know secondary accounts of the same person so yeah this is a short overview into the roadmap of starknet social this is something you know just upcoming in the next quarter but we have definitely bigger plans and it is going to, as I said, we are trying to provide value to the people, and that's what we believe in. I see. Thanks a lot, uh, Rajmil. Uh, I found uh, your description uh, very interesting. And uh, I must also say that I personally enjoyed uh, the process uh, of creating, uh, you know, my own uh, on-chain space on Starkness Social. For the time being, I have two identities, and one of them is uh, nurstar.starknet. And uh, so far, I like the fact that, you know, while I was uh, creating uh, my social space uh, on Starkness Social, I really liked uh, uh, the UX because uh, it was very similar, you know, to the one that you experience uh, when you are creating your own profile uh, on a Web2 uh, platform. But in the Starkness Social case, uh, it had, you know, this uh, Web3 twist. And uh, I really liked that. And, you know, um, I'm I, I really looking forward uh, to playing uh, a lot uh, with uh, my social space uh, in the near future. And also, uh, I, I will try my best in order to generate, you know, a, a good trust score. I think that's also a very good initiative, as you said, in order to prevent uh, uh, scams on, on a hand and on the other to stimulate, uh, uh, you know, your activities on your social space. So maybe you could also try uh, driving some of your uh, uh, Twitter uh, activities into the, the, the social Starknet, uh, uh, the Starknet social space uh, or just, you know, uh, working parallelly, uh, parallel on both uh, Twitter and, uh, and, uh, and the social space. So uh, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of interesting uh, things. And, uh, you know, your, uh, your speech, guys, uh, had, uh, excited me a lot. So really looking forward to, to what, will, what the future will bring to Starkness Social. And, um, well, uh, right now, uh, I've got a kind of a spicy question, you know, and uh, I'd like to know if uh, uh, Starknet Social can be considered uh, a competitor of the Starknet ID uh, domain service, as they saw that you're also offering, uh, you know, uh, similar uh, names. 
And uh, I'd also like to know if these names are also domains. I think you already answered to this question in uh, one of your answers earlier. But you know, can they can they be used uh, as addresses uh, as well? And uh, to finish this point, uh, uh, what makes uh, Starknet Social unique and different from uh, any other project uh, in the space? Definitely, I would love to answer this question. To understand it simply is just to see the difference between Lens Protocol and ENS. So something, uh, I believe Starknet ID is totally dedicated to providing the .start domain, whereas we are not like a domain service provider. We are looking into a bigger picture and trying to create more value, at least for ourselves and provide it to our community through StartNet Social, which is a social network protocol. You have .cairo, .sns, .strk, .l2, .zk, .0, and .startnet domains available for you to register. And that is you creating your social network Web3 account. And of course, we can resolve addresses to domains it is the simplest thing to do but we wouldn't like say that we are you know like we see them uh, you know them as our competitors in fact you know personally we appreciate the growth that are bringing like they are bringing to starknet ecosystem at this moment starknet is fairly in a growing stage in a growing stage as in you know it needs to have this growth even more so in, you know, the upcoming months to attract, uh, you know, or become a major blockchain service provider. At, at least that's what we believe. And projects like Startnet ID and, you know, all the people on the Startnet ecosystem, for us, we just feel that, you know, we are really happy with their success as they're bringing more people and positive approach to this network. And that's something I think this network needs because we are Dolvin Labs as ecosystem catalyst and that's what we would like to see and have and that brings for us even you know more opportunity more people to interact with and you know more uh, members to add to our community so in simplest terms it's just like a difference between lens protocol and ENS so I think it is easily understandable to all our audiences over here and as well as you that uh, we personally don't see ourselves like as a competitor. But yeah, definitely we provide something of different value than what they are trying to provide to the people. So yeah, that is something very basic and just, uh, you know, available for people to see. Another notable thing that I would like to talk about since we have so many, you know, your platform, is we have a limited supply. We are not letting, you know, like uh, uh, everyone, you know, just go and maintain unlimited supply. Our supply is limited. Our supply is locked to 3,000, which is like we launched, and it is locked to 3,000, and it is running out fast. It is probably last 200 to 300 uh, spaces that are left to be minted. And in the coming months, we have like a monthly uh, limit that we would open, you know, like 300 spaces per month that would be open. And that's how we want to grow and progress because we want to create, of course, value, as I said, and exclusivity to our users and community. So I think it would really give, you know, a, better understanding because so we are a project who has a limited supply and you know offers a certain uh you know goes into a certain direction at least in terms of uh services and of course they have they are you know your standard domain providers with unlimited supply so i think that gives you the idea I see. Thanks a lot for clarifying uh, this point. It was very interesting uh, to me. 
uh, obviously, I, I mean, I don't see anything uh, uh, bad, uh, you know, at competition itself. Obviously, it's something that drives uh, uh, the, the the space forward. But it's also nice to see that you know you you will uh, you're trying you know to be also complementary, you know, uh, to to that kind of uh, of projects. So yeah, that, that's pretty promising. And I also liked uh, the comparison between uh, Lens Protocol and Ends Domains uh, service. So I'm also uh, really looking forward to seeing, you know, uh, their equivalents uh, developing uh, on Starknet. So you and you, Starknet Social on one hand uh, and uh, Starknet ID on the other. I think you are both two very uh, amazing projects and uh, I see a lot of future for, for, for both of you. And uh, having said that, also I like to say uh, to make a correction of something I said uh, uh, a couple of questions uh, earlier. That like uh, my uh, official uh, Starknet social profile is gonna be uh, nurstar.cairo, no, not nurstar.starknet, nurstar.cairo, and I got confused about that. Anyway, having said that, let's move to the final question of this uh, Star Cafe before closing it. And uh, could you could you give us a roadmap on the Starkness social platform? Are you working on new features and initiatives? Like maybe Hamid, you could you could answer to this one. Uh, sorry, guys, you have your mic. I think I, I will take it. I think he's having okay. connection issues. Uh, I see. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's traveling at the moment, yeah, but yeah. Okay. So. What we, I think I've already mentioned about like more features that we are building with the social space, with the trust fact, uh, you know, trust core. What I would like to just add to that is that we have an integration SDK that, you know, all the projects in Starknet can just integrate. And what our integration is like is, you know, like you have, as I said, when you mint your social space, you have the NFT avatar and your name and you know so it's a super cool integration system that we have built and soon enough we'll be announcing you know our one of you know we announce the integration with the uh, Cairo Lip and start and social but now the upcoming integration is going to be more exciting with more projects that are on the mainnet so yeah it's going to be super fun in this journey at least with start and social and uh, we expect all people to uh, who have minted to of course and they are excited and the other people as well to get excited and uh, just more with dolphin lab would be coming soon as well you know so we might have a space with you and talk about that but yeah definitely it was just uh, super awesome to be here and i hope i've given you a deep insight into our roadmap and our vision with Starknet social and the value that we are trying to provide overall with our efforts through Dolphin Labs. Absolutely, Rashmil, you did a great job at uh, explaining us, uh, I mean, uh, start about Starkness Social uh, and also about their future developments that I really can't wait uh, to see in the future. And also the ones uh, uh, around uh, Dolphin Labs and, and the projects that uh, you'll incubate in the near future. Having said that, uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would like to say I had a great time at this uh, Star Cafe. Uh, right now it's time uh, to close it, but uh, yeah, thanks a lot for coming here and uh, looking forward to meeting you at the next uh, Star Cafe that we'll do together. Uh, I'm sure uh, no many months uh, will uh, will uh, uh, will pass by before we'll have another one. And I also like to thank uh, uh, Ahmed. And uh, lastly, also uh, a big and special thanks go to the public, to the audience for taking uh, some of their precious time to be with here today. So having said that, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, thank you. Thank you for having time. us. And, yeah. Thanks a lot. I see that uh, Ahmed is requesting uh, uh, the, uh, the, the permission to speak, but I think it's too late right now. So yeah, yeah. I, I think you got <laughs> disconnected. But... Good, good, yeah. Goodbye to him. And uh, goodbye to everybody. And uh, don't remember to share the StackNet vibe. And see you on the next episode of Star Cafe. Bye-bye to everybody. Thank you.